Let's hear the word of God. And I will be your father, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank you, Thank you Reed. Thank you, Reed. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, please let there be less of me and more of you. Speak through me the words that you would have people here this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I say that prayer and immediately turn to one of the most sacred duties that I believe that a music minister or a worship leader has, and that's to tell jokes that make sure that all of the preacher's jokes sound really good and today happens to be father's day and so that means it's kind of a double whammy because it opens up the door for dad jokes and so i'm going to tell you three and in the spirit of dad jokes i told two of these jokes last year just to see if you remember them from last year because that's 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 part of the whole nature of dad jokes is is the same ones over and over and over and over again. Joke number one. What's brown and sticky? A stick. A stick. <laughs> Joke number two. What do sprinters eat for breakfast? What? Nothing. They fast. <laughs> now, before I tell this, this third joke, which is my favorite joke of all time, no one's accidentally injured themselves with a chainsaw cutting up trees that have fallen, have they? Because I don't want to be insensitive. <laughs> oh no! Well, it's just Jerry, so... Oh my goodness. I'm going to tell it anyway, and Jerry, we're laughing with you, not at you. There were two friends. They were, they were cutting down trees in the forest with chainsaws. And the friend's chainsaw slipped, and he accidentally cut off his own leg. The other man said, oh no, what do I do? So he picked up his friend and he put him in his truck. He picked up his friend's leg and he put it in a plastic bag and he drove it to the hospital. And three days later, he checked on his friend and he found him up and dancing. And he said, wow, the wonders of modern science. The next week, the friend was out with another friend in the forest. They were cutting down trees with chainsaws. His friend chainsaw slipped and he accidentally cut off his own arm. He said, well, they reattached the leg just fine, so he picked up his friend and put him in his truck. He picked up his friend's arm and put it in a plastic bag and drove him to the hospital. Three days later, he checked on his friend and he was up and playing the violin. And he said, wow, the wonders of modern science. Next week, he was out in the forest with another friend and they were cutting down trees with chainsaws and his friend's chainsaw slipped and he accidentally cut off his own head. And he said, well, they reattached the arm, they reattached the leg. So he gathered up his friend and he put him in his truck and he gathered his friend's head and put it in a plastic bag and he drove him to the hospital. He checked on his friend three days later and sadly, his friend had passed away. And as he was talking to the doctor, he said, you know, I knew there had to be a limit to what modern science could do. And the doctor said, oh no, we could have reattached the head just fine, but some idiot put it in a plastic bag and he suffocated. <laughs> now, all of Mark's jokes from here on out should sound fantastic. Dad jokes, dad, dad humor, all of those things, that, the, the things that we have, have placed on, on fathers. Um, you know, uh, Charlie spoke a bit about his dad. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the same. I'm going to get to visit with you guys a little bit about my dad. I'm going to visit with you a little bit about my father-in-law and then a little bit of my own experiences and, and, and draw some conclusions there. Um, I think the verse um, that really sums up my dad was Luke 11.11. 11. Which of you fathers... If your son asks for a fish, we'll give him a snake, or instead, it goes on to say, or give, if he asks for an egg, give him a scorpion. 
Uh, if, you, if you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? And that, that was the nature of my dad. As I got to watch him as, as I grew up, how he helped everybody that was around him. He, he, he was a man of tremendous skill. Um, uh, my dad was very mechanically inclined, but at the same time had a doctorate of education and taught computer science at East Texas Baptist University for almost 40 years. Uh, he had friend groups that just couldn't hardly believe that uh, you know he was this person over here and this person over there. One of the things my dad did growing up was he collected and restored Cushman motor scooters. He would find them in barns, he would find them at the bottom of lakes, he would find them anywhere and everywhere. And uh, at one time we had 14 of them, tons, tons of these little motorcycles, and, and he would collect and restore them. And, and we would go uh, to Cushman conventions across the state, and people there would talk to him about his expertise in, in building Cushman motor uh, scooter engines, and they couldn't believe that this was a man that should probably be addressed as Dr. Mills. With, uh, and then you would go to meet his academic friends and his co-workers at the college who couldn't believe that he had all of this skill with his hands. He would help anybody and everybody that asked for help. Um, that's, that's some of my biggest memories is getting picked up, you know, on, on, a, after, uh, on a weekend is what I'm trying to say, getting picked up on a weekend and, and we're going to do this person's yard today because uh, they need it. Um, you know, and we would get there and find that the tire was flat. He said, all right, Dave, you, you do the yard, and I'll get this tire, and we'll, we'll get this taken care of. Uh, I was not what we call a PK, a preacher's kid. Uh, but I was as close as you could be, I guess, without actually having a dad that was a preacher. He served as an elder. He served as a deacon in the church where I grew up, the Evangelical Presbyterian Church of Marshall. And... Uh, he, uh, he, he did anything and everything that needed to be done at the church. We were at the church every single time the, the doors were open. And those had lasting impressions on me of, of how to lead by example. And that's, uh, uh, that was my dad in a nutshell. As I got older, I got to be uh, 17, 18 years old, and I met the lady right there in the front pew there, and uh, I, I had the benefit at 20 years old of gaining a second father. And you know, TV and television and media and, and such makes an uh, awful lot of fun of in-laws, but I was lucky to essentially have gotten a second mom and dad. And I saw a whole different side of fatherhood where, um, my uh, father led by example in his own life. I got the glimpse of a second father who led a church. Now, Corey is a PK uh, and grew up as a preacher's kid. I don't, I don't want to even keep track of how many times she had to move from church to church. She moved to meet me our senior year of high school. And that, that, that was really something. But my father-in-law was a United Methodist pastor, and he uh, um, is the reason why I'm a United Methodist today. Uh, as I met Corey and started dating Corey and eventually married Corey, I would sit down with my father-in-law and we would talk about all kinds of things. And uh, uh, there were five things that I noticed that I thought marked the... Uh, um, marked a man of God watching my father-in-law. The first was relationship to Jesus Christ and it was evident in everything that my father-in-law did. The impact on the church and my goodness, that man made an impact on every church that he ever served. I got to be a part of the United Methodist Church in Hughes Springs where he was serving and so I got to be a congregation member there for, for a while while he was the preacher. 
and then uh, we visited most of the other churches that he uh, he was leading at the time. He he eventually moved on to Buffalo, Texas, and Duke, Texas, and um, on occasion uh, we would be able to visit and and be there for his sermons and get to get to hear his preaching. And so I got to witness firsthand how one, one man could impact a church. Thirdly, his compassion for people um, would go maybe too far is not the, not the right, right word, but uh, I got to hear most of Corey's stories and the, and the family stories of they knew that he was not going to leave church for over an hour after church finished because he would visit and visit and visit. If he ran into people at the grocery store, he would visit and visit and visit. And one of the stories Corey tells and, and, and remembers all the time is they would eventually, they would go on vacation and they would drive for hours and get where they were going and then eventually he would get a phone call. About the time they were checking into the hotel, this person in the congregation passed away. This person has a problem in the congregation and the family would just pack up and drive right back home to take care of what needed to be done. Fourthly, a reliance on God, which is one of those things that, that we, all, uh, we all strive for, but it's very evident when, when a person is reliant on God and not on their own strength. And finally, number five, the mark of a man of God, integrity. Integrity in all that you do, uh, being truthful and honest and all of those things. These were the models, you know, uh, that I had as growing into growing up and growing into a young man and growing into fatherhood myself. And uh, um, I think they, they really taught me one thing, and, and that's you've got to grow up. And you've got to grow into your relationship with God. You cannot stay a child. And uh, to, you've got to take on the mantle of Christ. You've got to put on that yoke. It's not a hard yoke, but, but it is one that you put on, you take on. As a, as a young man growing into my relationship with, with Jesus Christ, one of the things that I always... Uh, I think begins to mark a sense of maturity, especially as a man. And as 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 a male, we, we we love our toys, especially toys that go really, really, really fast. And I think one of those signs of maturity is when we, we grow up a little bit and we begin to see speed limits for what they are, not a limitation on um, what we can or cannot do, but a reminder of what, what is right and what is safe. And I think that's one of those hallmarks that, that shows us that when our, our faith has fully matured is when we stop viewing God as this giant policeman in the sky waiting to zap you with lightning or waiting to, to strike you down or just, oh, you broke that rule and now you pay this consequence. And it's, there are no rules. If we are free in Christ, we are free indeed. Uh, all things are permissible for us as Christians, but we are reminded, just like those speed limits, that not all things are profitable. And the more we grow into that relationship, we don't see God as this giant set of rules, but as a person that we grow to and, and that we want to do the things that grow that relationship with Jesus Christ. And that is that is what I learned from uh, the the two dads that have inspired me is as we grow up. So please pray with me. Heavenly Father, thank you for the models that you gave us in fatherhood, in, in protection and in guidance and growing up in maturity. Help us to grow closer to you in all things that we do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.